Hello. My last video was uh, me talking about how my British Transport Police brother, his English sister-in-law, um, a probate law firm called Gedeon Sons, who are based in Cumbria, Northwest England, but operate in London, the city of London, how they colluded together to try and remove through fraud and perjury uh, me and, uh, and exclude me as, a, as an executor legally named in my mother's will how they tried to do that while I was in Nigeria after my mother's burial before I was able to come back to the UK, uh, London in the UK. So this video, I'm going to talk about what happened when I came back to the UK and which I did uh, within four days after I read the email from uh, Mark the probate manager in Nigeria that where he was trying uh, he was he seemed to be uh, saying that uh, uh, he at his firm he his firm my British transport police brother were going to um, proceed without me effectively removing me as an executor when I saw that email I uh, uh, travelled back to the UK within four days of that so this is a uh, about uh, the further deception and manipulation and abuse and fraud that was uh, carried out on me by the uh, I'd say he's the senior solicitor, the most senior solicitor of that probate firm, Gedeon Sons, most senior solicitor. And he's uh, the joint owner uh, and one of the directors of the firm. So he's a, a director and a joint owner with uh, another solicitor uh, whose name's Mark also Mark uh, who runs the main office in uh, Grangeover Sands Cumbria Northwest England so it's it's about uh, the abuse and I, I suffered from him when he invited me to meet him in a meeting room where he had the firm's office in 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 uh, the 
City of London, London. So, I, as I was saying, I, I travelled back to London within uh, four days. And before that, I had told, written to them and told them not to uh, uh, proceed without me, that they were trying to do things uh, behind my back, that I've never consulted with them and I've never instructed them, that I don't... I've never met them, I don't know who they are, that my brother had consulted them without me because he went to see them without telling me and only told me afterwards with his English sister-in-law. Uh, his English sister-in-law uh, who referred him to the firm who uh, found out about the firm uh, who, for him and uh, who also actively colluded with him in uh, going to meet this Gideon Sons uh, director and owner without me because she also went and as I said in the previous video when my brother went he, he took her he didn't tell me he was going and he didn't tell me he was uh, going with her. But when he went, he, uh, he, um, he uh, told this Gideon Sons director owner that uh, there was a problem in that the my mum had appointed three executors. Why is that a problem? If the if there was a problem with that, the original will writers would obviously have not uh, advised her to do that. It's obviously. It's obviously done so that one executor doesn't have too much power to do what he likes. And it's done so that there'll be checks and balances, you know. But he, he went to uh, this Gideon Sons, uh, director, solicitor, Richard. Uh, and he said there was a problem with uh, uh, there being too many executors. And he, he was co consulting him about the possibility of him being the sole executor. In other words, he, he wanted to be the sole executor. And his English sister-in-law was there. So she obviously knew that he wanted that. And uh, she absolutely went along with that. She may even have advised him to do that or to tell this uh, Gideon Sons uh, director solicitor that so she absolutely went up along with that she absolutely was involved with that and uh, uh, I, uh, as 
as I was saying in the previous video, I only found out that he did that a long time later. Long time after I had already been abused by this uh, Gideon Sons uh, the uh, owner solicitor. And um, I only found out about that up later. And but but immediately afterwards, he or maybe a few days afterwards or so, he came to me and said that solicitor suggested that I and my uncle step down. He never said anything about what he did that he went that he said that the solicitor said, suggested that I and my uncle step down when it was really him that went to this uh, solicitor probate solicitor and said that he wanted to be the only solicitor so um when I, I, I came back after uh, four days, uh, I almost maybe the day afterwards, I got in contact after I arrived back, I got in contact with the original will writers uh, who are called Martin Shepherd and Co uh, based in Enfield and Edmonton, North London, who wrote my mum's will. And I tried to speak to, uh, you know, one of the solicitors that deal was dealing with wills and probate. Uh, I wasn't, they, did, they didn't make it easy for me. They, I said I had to leave a message and I left the message saying that what had happened, that my brother was and uh, a, a firm that he's recruited and instructed without me were trying to remove me as an executor. But that, that, uh, so the solicitor of that firm involved, uh, his first name is Gareth. He was pretty appalling when he phoned me back. This is a matter of course for solicitors. I mean, I've never met this man. And yet when he phoned me back, he was appalling he wasn't helpful he wasn't helpful he wasn't helpful to me he, he, he told me oh there is a problem but I have to um get my own independent legal advice uh, and that uh he he um couldn't advise because it would be a conflict of interest really but when i asked him oh how, how is it a conflict of in interest he snapped at me why would you snap at me for asking a a straightforward question unless uh, you had ulterior motives he snapped at me saying uh, well I'm not going to um, go through the um, the the law of conflicts of interest with you really that sounds like uh, fobbing me off and that sounds like stonewalling to me that was outrageous and in 
in effect, he kept information from me. He kept important information from me, which I found out later which I mentioned in the previous video, that uh, this firm, this probate manager of this firm, Geddy & Sons, had written to him, lying about me, saying that I've gone to Nigeria to live, and wanting him to be involved in cooperating with them in removing me, in committing the fraud against me, to exclude me as an executor, to get a, a grant of probate without my name on it and without telling me, and then proceed with uh, doing all sorts of uh, affairs of the estate without me. The, 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 he, he never said anything like that to me so it would it would have been a conflict of interest would it to tell me that I've phoned you telling you they're trying to remove me behind my back they they tried to do it while I was in Nigeria and I've traveled back You're supposed to tell me that they've written you and what you're supposed to tell me what they've written. You're supposed to send me, oh, actually, they said you you uh, were in Nigeria to stay. They said that you and your uncle have agreed that power should be reserved to uh, your brother, you know. He knew what they were trying to do and he never told me a thing. This is what these English solicitors are like. This is the sort of thing I've experienced uh, from them. They are crooks. They are evil. They are nasty. And they seem to be allowed to do that. Uh, there's no checks and balances governing their behaviour. The, 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 the regulation, uh, solicited regulation authority is a complete fraud. The regulation system is a complete fraud. It's, it's, it, it, it's, it's an absolute fraud. They govern themselves. They regulate themselves via their club, the Law Society. And the Solicited Regu Regulation Authority is set up by the Law Society and is a part of the Law Society and does nothing whatsoever or let's say almost nothing to protect vulnerable members of the public and there are many of them from being exploited by this this uh it's like a racket it's basically A racket that's an extension of a secret society. It's a secret society racket. It's a Masonic racket because the Law Society has been uh, stated uh, in a book about Freemasons as one of the most Masonic organisations in the world. And I would say, uh, I would say, um, England and the English government, English uh, rule, uh, English 
the English control system, the English, uh, uh, yeah, English establishment is based on Freemasonry. It, it's controlled by Freemasonry. London is an extremely Masonic city, but yet most people don't know it. And it's, it's almost invisible, you know. As you go around London, especially uh, central London and the city of London, you don't realise that how Masonic it is, but it's extremely Masonic. You know, people don't have a clue. And the city of London would absolutely be the most Masonic part of uh, London. Absolutely. It's 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 it's, uh, it's probably one of London's best kept secrets, you know. So um, that is how that uh, solicitor that wrote, was involved in writing my mum's will uh, reacted to me. He didn't help me, and he kept stuff from me. He kept stuff from me. Important stuff. He's a crook. Not just uh, Gedeon's sons. Uh, were crooks that abused me. Even the firm uh, that wrote my mum's will. And the solicitor that actually has his signature on my mum's will. are crooks and they crooked me so he, he he didn't help me he was he was um stonewalling me from the beginning and i would say it's he has a lot to do with me being abused by that firm Gideon sons and my brother because i reached out to him and he didn't warn me at all. He didn't warn me at all. He didn't give me the information that I was entitled to. And he knew what they wanted to do. He knew what they wanted to do. So, um, uh, I even went physically to their office of Martin Shepherd and Kai. I actually went physically there because I was being stonewalled. Because I was being stonewalled. And when I went there, I was stonewalled by the by the receptionist. That's that's the behaviour. So um. So, um, I, let me see now, I, um, I, 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 I looked for advice, I looked for advice, it's, it's not easy to get advice from a solicitor it's not easy to um get help it's not easy to um i i i i do remember phoning uh a um something that uh i saw online solicitors.com or something like that uh reaching out the solicitors or advice or something like that and I told the person I spoke to on the phone what had happened and I do remember that that person on the phone when I told them what happened they said uh, don't meet don't go to their office to meet them because uh, 
you could be compromised. You know, I remember that was told me. But I didn't, you know, I, I didn't know anything about all this. I didn't have a previous experience of a, of um, dealing with a will. And I didn't have detailed experience of dealing with solicitors. I had some experience and that was bad as well. That was bad that I had some years ago. You know, I would say about English solicitors, I've never had a good experience with one of them. And I've been thinking this for a while. And after I was thinking this for a while, I heard someone else say this same thing or, or, you know, I, I read a comment maybe on, on online that someone else said the same thing, you know, uh, I've never had a good experience with one of them. I think this is common, you know, cause that, that is definitely my experience. Uh, so that person said that don't meet them in their office or you could be compromised, you know. Which obviously, that sounds, it, 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 you know, that, that, that was useful advice, but I wasn't experienced in, enough to, to take that advice, you know further down the line I did go and meet him because you know uh, the estate needed dealing with uh, the estate needed dealing with you know it wasn't immediately because I left it for some months and uh, uh, after some maybe uh I don't know, maybe a month or so, or, or something like that, or maybe a bit more than that. I got in contact with uh, this firm after I read a reply to my email that I sent in Nigeria. Uh, I got in contact and uh, I asked for the, the the man who wrote me the letter, Richard, and um, he didn't get back to me. It was uh, the probate solicitor, Mark, that uh, got in, in contact with me from Cumbria. Although I didn't know that, I didn't even know about Cumbria or where it was at that time. And um, he basically acted like um, they, they um, weren't going to try to remove me and that they were willing to, uh, to um, deal with me as an executor to uh to work with me and include me not uh remove me or exclude me you know uh he even said something along the lines of uh you know uh he said something along the lines of um your uncle doesn't need to um, be involved as an executor, you know, because he's away in Nigeria. But, you know, you, you, you're you here so you can be involved. And, and, and if you're involved, that would be enough to make sure um, everything is transparent. That's what he said. That would be enough to make sure everything is transparent. So he he knew that uh, 
there was the possibility of lack of transparency if it was just my brother uh, that was the executor and yet the estate was administered only by my brother through their fraud and through their abuse and there wasn't transparency and so he he uh, he sent me some papers but then he uh, phoned me and told me that um this uh director owner richard uh was ready to meet me he told me he was ready to meet me because my brother had even um in one of his emails suggested that i meet him because obviously i hadn't met him so uh i agreed to that but i later found out through some documents that this probate manager after he arranged for me to meet with this probate solicitor informed my brother he didn't let me know that he had done that and basically from the document I saw that my brother was the one that was that had uh, pushed them to to meet with me my brother was the the one behind it and I was abused at the meeting my brother was behind I was abused at it uh, so um, when I met this this uh, probate solicitor director I met him at a building called 15 Old Bailey uh, City of London it's on the same road that the Old Bailey Central Criminal Court is it's on the same road it's a it's a it's a building where um a lot of solicitors use it and I think they they don't have I don't really think they have rooms to themselves I think they may share rooms with other firms so they may have a desk or a couple of desks or something you know something along those lines you know but and then they'll have a meet there was a uh the 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 building or the management of the building have uh meeting rooms at the bottom they have meeting rooms uh at the bottom uh, in the basement for them to hire so when I met this Gideon Sons director I met him in one of the meeting rooms in the basement I never uh, saw I never they never showed me where their office was what floor it was on you know so that's that's a that's deceptive really that's deceptive just meet in a in a meeting room and the meeting room was only a few feet away from uh the management's office you know so when uh when um i met this uh Gideon Sons director solicitor Richard uh 
he shook hands with me and as soon as he shook hands with me before he had even sat down he started saying to me I'm going to give you a uh, a few days I'm going to give you a uh, till the weekend finished because that was a Friday and then I'm going to cite you and I innocently asked him, oh, what do you mean by sight? And he said, oh, sight, that is where I take uh, legal action against you to force you to step down as an executor. And I was shocked. And I backed away from this, this creep to the wall and I said why are you speaking to me like that because when I was invited to see him I wasn't told that I was going to be threatened I wasn't told that I was going to be um accosted and 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 uh, abused and and ambushed because it was an ambush and this solicitor, he's an English man, white English. And as soon as I've met him in this uh, meeting room, he started threatening me, abusing me and ambushing me. He was also with uh, a trainee solicitor, a woman, another white English so I was being ambushed by two white English solicitors that, uh, you know, I never expected that. I never expected that. And it felt utterly racist. It felt utterly racist. I felt utterly ambushed. He just, just what he, he did when I met him is enough, as far as I'm concerned, for him to be, uh, that is misconduct, that is outrageous, you invite me to a meeting posing as someone that's uh, going to help me with my mother's estate, going to um, uh, help me be an, an executor. And the first thing you do when you see me is tell me you're going to give me a few days, then you're going to cite me. Cite me for what? You have no grounds to cite me for anything. And he invited, he, he then proceeded to try to tell me I was uh, uh, holding up the administration of the estate. I was refusing to, uh, to work with my so-called brother. I was refusing uh, to work with them. When it's my brother that had been refusing to uh, contact me, refusing to let me know what he was doing, he he's the one who uh, uh, went to this crook, this crook Richard of Gedeon sons and and uh, told him he wanted to be the only solicitor uh, executor but I didn't even know it at that time he's the one that uh, instructed this uh, Gedeon sons and, and this solicitor without even telling me and then that and then they're trying to 
make out that I'm uh, holding up the estate. I've come there because I wanted to progress uh, the estate. I've come there because I wanted to be involved. This guy is a real devil, this Richard. He's an utter, utter devil. He's a devil. A racist devil. Racist devil in capital letters. I was experiencing racism in the city of London. I was experiencing abuse in the city of London. They try to make you believe that there's no racism in England anymore. There's no racism in London. That couldn't be further from the truth. I was in the city of London, which I hardly ever go to. And when I go there, when I went there, I was abused by two white people in the city of London. That should tell you something. And the city, I, I've, I've uh, gone to the city of London police and told them. And they've done nothing. Not only that, they uh, fobbed me off by giving me the details of action fraud. Uh, because they said it was fraud. And I later find out that action fraud is a fraud. It's a call centre that has been set up for police to fob off victims of fraud to. And, uh, you know, um, it's been found out that uh, 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 a, an undercover journalist uh, was recruited... Uh, signed up for a job and he heard actually heard uh a trainee who was a policeman saying that none of these reports are ever investigated shocking you know but that was what i suffered in the city of london and this richard of gedeon sons he's not even from london He's not from London. He's from Cumbria. And he has the arrogance to invite me and abuse me. He invited me there to carry out a fraud on me. He invited me there to get me to step down uh, using this fraud that probate solicitors have called power reserved because if uh, an executor that's named in the will doesn't want to be an executor they can step down they can uh, step down formally and, and permanently by um, uh, you know um, applying to the court or the probate registry and and formally stepping down you know but this power reserved uh is is a fraud that these probate solicitors use he he used it on me to say well uh if you know you're not fully stepping down you know you're not fully stepping down. You can always, you, 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 you'll still be an executor. But you'll be a non-proving executor. Your brother will be the proving executor. This is all nonsense and all fraud. You know. Uh, it, it's true that I would still be an executor. But he never did treat me like that. He treated me like I wasn't an executor. And and, and he told me, you know, uh, you can always become a proving executor at a later date. You can always become a proving executor at a later date. 
it's a fraud it's a fraud <laughs> because his intention was that I never become a proving executor at a later date. His intention was that I never become a proving executor at a later date. And this nonsense about proving and non-proving, that is not in probate law. That's not in probate law. But I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And he used that uh, meeting, our meeting, he used the whole thing to, to get me to agree to step down under this power reserved, uh, telling me, well, you can always become a approving executor at a later date. Um, his the tone of the meeting was hostile uh throughout the tone of the meeting was hostile uh i he, he at one point i asked him and it's in the the notes it's in the um the attendance notes which he didn't want me to see even though i have the right to see them obviously i have the right to see them you know i, I was in the meeting uh so um it's in the note that i asked him specifically if i were to become uh, a non-proving executor as you're 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 talking about would i still have the right to access the um estate information state information or does that mean that uh i wouldn't as a non-proving executor you know and he said, "Oh, you know, not really. It wouldn't mean that you, 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 um, you wouldn't have the the right. You know. And yet, I later found out, you know, this is uh, much later, uh, when I spoke to uh, an outside probate solicitor." from uh which legal which legal he who, who told me that um he told me once you step down you have no right to estate information this uh richard of gedeon sons solicitor who invited me with the purpose of removing me that's what he did he invited me with the purpose of removing me this this Richard uh, lied to me in order to induce me to step down it's a fake step down because uh, if you re to really step down you have to um i forgot the word begins with r uh you have to um uh i've forgotten the word but you have to um formally step down you know this power reserved is something they use to get people to informally step down it's a fraud. It's not meant to be used in the way they use it. That power reserved is is for is for estates, uh, where the the estate will go on 
but for a long time after the 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 person has died and and uh, after the um you know the the probate has been done the estate has been administered it, it's for it's for it, it it's 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 not for uh situations where there's a limited amount and then after a certain amount of time everything has been administered because uh he's he was basically telling me i can all, always um uh i can always uh 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 you know become a proving executor at a later date he he was saying that when he knew that at a later date there would be no more estate to administer he was lying to me and he was uh carrying out a fraud on me it's a fraud this this uh solicitor director of of uh Gideon sons basically carried out fraud on me probate fraud probate application fraud and uh he's 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 a fraud is a criminal act he's 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 a criminal he's a fraudster and the fraud involved more than him just inviting me to abuse me and carry out the fraud uh and and it it also the fraud uh involved uh them the firm and my so called brother who is a a british transport police officer so called officer of the law it involved him uh and them uh applying for a grant of probate in my brother's name only under the guise of power reserved they 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 use power reserved to explain away why an estate with three executors uh is applying for why an executor of of a, an estate with three executors is applying for an estate uh with only uh his name in only his name and only his name to be on the grant of probate they put on the on the, on the grant of probate power reserved to other executors they put that's what they put on there power reserved to other executors they don't check with the other executors if uh they've agreed to have power reserved it's a fraud this fraud comes from the courts it comes from the courts it's the courts that enable these crooked probate solicitors to do that because they put this power reserved option on the application form it doesn't need to be on the application form if uh, uh an an uh, an executor wants to um step down he he can there's another form to fill in where he he formally steps down you know this power reserve they use uh so that they can go behind executors back and say well they 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 uh power it's power reserved to them you know it's a fraud and the fraud comes from the courts and the probate registry not just from the um the probate solicitors 
you know. So I'm saying that um, uh, the they they the fraud was not just what was done to me, in the in the meeting room. It was uh, also um. It was, it was. When they applied for probate, in my brother's name. Even in the even on the probate application form, even on the probate application form, which I've I've uh, read, uh, I got a copy when I made my own application later on. Uh, it actually states on that form uh, for for executors who are applying only in their own name when there are other executors it says in capital letters you um, it says you must inform the other executors in writing if you are applying in your own name only you must inform the other executors in writing in writing obviously if they did it in writing there'd be a paper trail written evidence my brother this uh, Gideon Sons probate solicitor and this Gideon Sons probate manager did none of that they did not inform me or my uncle in writing they did not inform us in writing not only did they not inform us in writing they even swore an oath the firm enabled my brother to swear an oath and my brother's english sister-in-law uh helped my brother sign the oath so she's absolutely complicit in this to swear an oath that he had told me and my uncle uh, of his ap application in his sole name. He never did anything like that. He didn't tell me. He didn't tell my uncle. He cut off contact with me. But then he also did it with our uncle. Because... Uh, he didn't he, he didn't keep in contact with him and you know like i said in the last video he got the probate manager to phone my uncle he didn't you know and and uh my uncle demanded that he phone him and when he eventually phoned him, my uncle asked him for his number and he refused to give it to him. None, in none of that is involved him telling uh, my uncle uh, that he intends to... Uh, uh, apply for a grant of probate in his own in his name only but he swore an oath to the court it's it is a written oath that he sworn i've seen a copy i have a copy that he's sworn that he's told me and my uncle of his intention to apply for a grant of probate in his own name he did nothing of the kind. This crook did nothing of the kind. His perjury. You have a police officer committing perjury, which isn't unusual for police officers. I've heard of police officers committing perjury in, in physical court. From what I hear, they do it a lot. But it's, it's still perjury. Even if you do it 
a lot is still perjury. You know, uh, this this uh, Richard Roberts, he not only ambushed me and uh, threatened me and assaulted me, because I would regard what he did as assault, even though it's not a physical assault. It's a psychological and professional assault. You know, and it's an abuse of trust. It's abuse of uh, his position. And it's a racist act. It's absolutely a racist act. I felt it when I was in the room with him. And uh, the white female um, solicitor or trainee solicitor that was in the room taking notes you know, and she was involved in uh, enticing me to that meeting as well. She was involved in encouraging me to come to that meeting. I felt, I felt a racist assault. That my, it's my brother, British Transport Police Officer, that has, uh, paved the way for me to be assaulted like that it's shocking it really is shocking you know so this solicitor he not only ambushed me threatened me lied to me to get me to step down and committed fraud against me he also uh got a wrote a or typed out on a piece of paper a statement for me to sign and then he basically pushed me into signing it he's basically forced me into signing it uh, a statement which is deceitful a statement which is detrimental to me a statement which is manipulative beyond even the fraud he had already carried out on me it's beyond that because uh i i i told him that uh i was uh you know i was willing to um step down in order to progress the estate. That I later wrote to him and told him I wasn't. Because the whole uh, thing was oppressive anyway. Uh, I was in a, a, an oppressive situation. And an oppressive situation where he was pushing me. And where he was deceiving me. So it's coercion. You know. And I told him that uh i asked him uh if he had something for me to sign in writing he took advantage of that he took advantage of my willingness to cooperate and he uh he went up to his office and he quickly typed something out and printed it out and uh, when he gave it to me to sign, I said to him, uh, I said to him, well, when we shook hands, you said you were going to give me some days, uh, you know, to think about it, you know. And when I said that, he stood over me. And, uh, you know, he stood over me and said, no, do it now. No, do it now. When I later, this is a long time later, went to the city of the city of London police 
and told them what he did, what they told me was, if he's forced you to sign something, that's fraudulent. Which is, of course, is right. That is outrageous what he did. That is absolutely outrageous. Uh, where can I see? No, I can. I can even. Uh, there's something somewhere here that uh, I can condemn him with his own words. This, this, uh, Gideon Sons, uh, director, probate, solicitor. This, uh, this nasty man is involved in teaching law students. You know, he's involved in teaching law students at Durham University. But he has also written an article uh, which is on uh, the Law Society website. This uh, article is um, entitled close to home spotting elder abuse and uh, he he poses as someone that uh, uh, has concern for the elderly and this is a uh, 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 him detailing warning signs of financial abuse of the elderly you know, uh, but that he's implying that that's family members financially abusing the elderly. He's not implying solicitor abuse of the elderly. Because I've seen a comment from a man who strangely is from Cumbria. I've seen a comment online from a man, Jonathan, I don't remember the second name, Jonathan, but it, 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 he, 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 he was from Cumbria and he stated, he stated this, he stated solicitors often uh, abuse and take advantage of elderly um, clients. He actually stated that, you know, and this Gideon Sons, where they're based in uh, Northwest England, Cumbria, Grange over Sands. I've been there, I've been there. I've been there quite a few times. It's where their main office is. When I went there, I realized it was a, uh, it's on the, it's on, it's on the coast and it's uh, largely a retirement village for the elderly. There's a lot of elderly there. There's elderly accommodation. There's also uh, care homes there. There's care homes. I've seen at least two care homes there. And um, one local, a bus driver, he, he, he told me that uh, Grange Over Sands was referred to as God's waiting room. This is where Gideon Sons' main office is. In a God's waiting room, you know, uh, they're vultures. 
their vultures because they, they they specialize in wheels and they've got a uh their main office in a in a village that is populated by the elderly obviously not only the elderly you know of course you know there's uh younger people and there's uh, younger people with families and there's you know uh it's it's i mean it's small it's a small village so um me going there helped me to 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 uh, learn more about them and build a bit of bigger picture. So when this uh man, this Cumbrian said online, solicitors often bully. I think that was the word he used. Yes, he said solicitors often bully elderly clients. Solicitors often bully elderly clients. Solicitors often bully elderly clients. That that also was a, an insight. So this 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 Richard. He can't he can't uh, try to say that oh it's just family members that uh, abuse the elderly. When you have a uh, testimony of someone from Cumbria, you know. He maybe he was even from Grange over Sands. Actually stating that solicitors often bully elderly clients. That's what he said. He said uh he said there's not much good outcome for them. I mean they're vulnerable. So uh so the he he's he's He's, 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 uh, this, this Gedeon sons, and he, 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 he does like to, um, you know, um, be quoted in newspapers, you know, as a, as a, as an expert on wills and probate. He's a crook, he's a crook. And also wills. And probate is a fraud anyway. It's a fraudulent process. It's a fraudulent system. I've heard a device that uh, that we should not get a will because wills are a scam. And with all I've been through, I instantly agreed with that. I've heard advice that we should not get a will because wills are a scam. That has been my experience. Uh, my mum wrote two wills. One for uh, the UK and one for Nigeria. Both my mum's wills uh the 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 solicitors that wrote them and solicitors that had been involved in them after she's died have been crooks you know and have uh shown no respect for my mum's wishes you know there's an executor of uh her will in Nigeria that has been an absolute crook that it, that that even tried to sell my mum's main house in Lagos Nigeria to uh his church to his church and and the solicitor uh, uh, the, the situation with both of my mum's estate is a mess and, and abusive. I've suffered terribly as a result of the uh, the one in um in London in, in UK. I've suffered terribly. I could have even killed myself by now. Uh, it's been so terrible. I've suffered so much. 
I'm going to try and uh, do as many videos as I need to cover all that's happened to me anyway. Uh, so anyway, um, this, this uh, probate solicitor, director owner of um, Geddy and Sons Richard, who invited me to a meeting room in the city of London and assaulted and committed fraud on me and threatened me and lied to me. He also pushed, you could say forced, me into signing an abusive, uh, manipulative, fraudulent, deceptive statement typed by him that was extremely detrimental to me and that was um, advantageous to him. He pushed and forced me into signing that statement while I was in the meeting room. That's, it's bullying, it's um, abuse, it's assault, it's taking advantage of uh, someone that is clueless about uh, wills and probate. I came to him to be helped by him. Instead, he's pushing me into signing uh, 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 an abusive, deceptive, uh, detrimental statement. You know. Later, a long time later, I saw this uh, article that he wrote for um, the the solicitors. Uh, clubs website law society uh, about spotting elder abuse one of the things that the, the thing that the thing that most hit me when I read this article he was uh he was answering the question, what is financial abuse? And he names, uh, he, 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 you know, it's, um, it's no, you know, it's, it's like one, two, three, four, you know, seven, seven uh, things. The one that was a killer for me was uh, when I read this one. Five, getting someone to sign a document through deception, coercion, coercion, or undue influence. I'll read it again. Getting someone to sign a document through deception, coercion or undue influence okay so of course when I read that I immediately thought that's what he did to me that's one of the main things he did to me to destroy my life he did that to me Getting someone to sign a document through deception, coercion or undue influence. He did all, it was all those three things. Deception was there. He lied to me. The big one is coercion. He, 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 he coerced me. He forced me. I said to him. Actually, uh, 
you even you said uh you were going to give me not that not that he even had the right to say he's going to give me time it's not your estate it's not i i haven't uh i haven't uh agreed that you should even be involved but i said to him you you even said you were going to give me some days i said before i signed and he stood over me and said no do it now no do it now it's coercion and it's also undue influence the whole idea of inviting me there and then threatening me and 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 and, and uh coercing me and lying to me it's all undue due influence absolutely he's writing an article to um inform uh you know fellow solicitors probably uh you know um maybe student solicitors or young solicitors <laughs> and he and that he's 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 that's that's to uh teach them how to spot it when family members are doing it but he's done that and and solicitors do that I've had the testimony of 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 uh, someone that had actually stated solicitors often bully elderly clients. You know, when I saw that, I I knew that that was true because I've experienced this guy inviting me to meet him to bully me, and him standing over me is bullying me. The whole thing was was bullying taking advantage of a an undue taking advantage of a an unrepresented layman you know that's uh, against the rules in the solicitor's regulation authority uh rule book he did that all the way he what he did to me absolutely comes under the category of misconduct misconduct professional misconduct <laughs> this 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 man richard of gedeon sons he should be struck off for what he did to me he should be struck off i could have committed suicide by now because of what he's done to me and he's done a lot to me since then he's an evil man he's an evil man it's utterly racist utterly racist it's utterly racist what he's done and this and it's my brother that has uh made me vulnerable to this utterly racist man the more i looked into the background of the firm the more i was convinced that it was racist i felt it at the time but when i went to the um the 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 town the village where they have their main office you know it's it's all white the whole village is white apart from one or two people you know and cumbria is is a predominantly white part of england you know but that but that i very much noticed and he, and you've you've come from that all white area and you've come to london to abuse a black londoner to invite a black londoner to to a uh, a meeting room in in london which obviously has a, a a lot of black people certainly more than uh than uh grange over sands and cumbria And, and you've done that. It's utterly racist. 
white English people can abuse a black person without uh, being overtly racist. You know, they know how to do that. Uh, there's racist motivations behind what he's done. There's greed as well. There's greed because um, they took £21,000 from my mother's estate as payment for what they did. And that payment it, for what they did includes abusing me. And and that that money it's equal equally comes out of my share of uh you know the the uh the payment from the estate you know it e that so that's seven thousand pounds that has come out of my share for me to be abused you know it's absolutely outrageous. Uh, I mean, this is long, really. I probably have to edit this. But, um, so, uh, also about that meeting, another thing I want to say is that, um, uh, that statement he forced me to sign uh, that statement he forced me to sign uh, <coughs> what happened now that statement he forced me to sign uh, later on I realized that the statement was dishonest, fraudulent, and manipulative. The guy is a complete fraud. A complete fraudster. I realized it was. It's, it's, it was like I said, it was fraudulent, uh, deceptive, manipulative. Uh, yes so he's, he's basically forced me to sign something that is a, a fraud like I said before that is very advantageous to him and very detrimental to me the uh The um, the just having a look at where it is now. Just having a look at where uh, the statement is to quote from it. This, this, uh, this statement he gave me to uh, sign, that was typed by him. It wasn't uh, a standard form or anything like that from the probate register. And it was typed up by him. So he, he gave me an agreement to sign that suited him. He took advantage of me. He took advantage of me. And taking advantage of a uh, unrepresented layman by a solicitor is against the rules in, in the solicitor's regulation book. And even if it wasn't, it's clearly, it's clearly, um, 
fraudulent, it's clearly um, misconduct, it's clearly, it, it really is, you know, abuse of trust, abuse of uh, your, your, your position. So he's, he's put, I confirm, I am, con I am accepting power reserved in the estate of my late mother and will remain a non-proving executor on condition that Geddy and Sons keep me informed of significant steps in the estate administration. He never gave me this to sign for, um, to help me. He never gave me that to sign to help me. Okay. He never gave me a copy of this. He never gave me uh, a copy of this. Uh, it was, uh, in the evening of the meeting that I sent him an email and asked him for a copy. And he got someone to send it maybe a uh, midweek the next week. But it was later on, like, when I was, um, you know, when they were being all the more hostile to me and when I looked at it later on, months later or even a year later that I realised that this uh, this statement he gave me was abusive fraudulent manipulative and deceptive and took advantage of me. He said, I confirm I am accepting power reserved in the estate of my late mother and will remain a non-proving executor. So this is the key to his fraud and his uh, abuse of me. Even his abuse of me is racist. Because I'm not sure he would have been willing to do to me in that meeting room what he what he did to me. I'm not sure he'd be willing to do that to a white person. He may well be, but uh, I definitely think there's something about him doing that to me that is racist but it's corrupt in any case which is just as bad so I confirm I am accepting power reserved in the estate of my late mother and will remain a non-proving executor so the key uh, the key abuse in that is where he says, I will remain a non-proving executor. Hang on a minute. He told me that power reserved meant I have not uh, formally relinquished my executorship formally and permanently done that I have not uh, done that and uh, I can still decide to um, that, oh I, I do want to be an executor you know he's basically told me that you know he said well you can always become a, a approving executor at a later date you know but here, he's saying, I'm accepting power reserved, which means I can, I, I, it means you, you're not 
stepping down, basically. See, it's a fraud anyway. But that basically, it means you reserve your power to be act as an executor in the future. You know, you, you reserve your power to act as an executor in the future. So that's the basis on which he's convinced me. You, you know, you, you're not... That's the deception, you know. You're not uh, stepping down, really. You can still... You, you can still decide to act as an executor later. But then he says... He's put in, in, in what he gave me to sign. I will remain a non-proving executor. That contradicts what he's uh, given me to agree to, that I'm accepting power reserved. Because accepting power reserved means you don't have to remain a non-proving executor. You see what I mean? The guy is a crook. The guy is an utter crook. He's put that in there. He hasn't told me that he's put that in there. I only noticed that more than a year later. When, when I was being abused by them in all sorts of ways. A year later, when when I was gearing up to make a complaint, you know, he's he's a. Uh, I've only noticed that later. I am accepting power reserved, which means I can still become a, a non-proving ex approving executor at a later date and will remain a non-proving executor that was never my intention to, to, to agree to remaining a non-proving executor that was never my intention and when I saw that I thought, I don't remember seeing that. You know, I don't remember seeing that when I originally signed. Maybe he added that when he took, after I signed and he took the the the, pa the sheet of paper up to his, uh, his uh, office. Or maybe he wrote that. trusting that I wouldn't um I wouldn't uh notice that because I knew nothing about this and don't forget when I've said to him you said you'll give me a few days he's he stood over me and and uh uh ordered me to do it now so he's ordered me and push and force me to sign something that he knows is dodgy. Which is the reason why he's done it. It's the reason why he's done it, you know. It's outrageous. Absolutely outrageous. It's absolutely outrageous. And I explained this when I did a review a Google review of Gedeon Sons. I I brought this up because I had noticed this. He was probably hoping I would never notice this. He was hoping I would never notice it. He's taken utter advantage of me because when I went to to meet him, I didn't know anything about wills or probate. Ah. Uh, I went to him, you know, for help. And also, this so-called brother hadn't uh, explained to me. This brother was in on this. 
this was what he was wanting me to to use when he said I and my uncle should step down it was this power reserved because he even said to me well you wouldn't be uh fully res relinquishing your executorship he knew about this he probably learned about this from this crooked uh sister-in-law english white english sister-in-law emily uh she 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 worked for withers and then she worked for shillings now she works for cats partners so, I believe, having thought about this a lot, that she's uh, told him that he can uh, get me and my uncle out of the way using this power reserved. Because he, he actually said to me, you wouldn't be fully relinquishing. So he... He, he's been told about this. He's known about this. Plus, I know that this Emily, this sister-in-law of his, uh, knew about this power reserved because she wrote to um, uh, Richard, the probate solicitor, and Mark, the probate manager, or wrote to one and spoke to another, she's mentioned power reserved. She's written to uh, them about me and my uncle mentioning power reserved. I've seen it. I've seen it in the um, statement of accounts. You know that uh, show uh, what the letters. You know what what's paid for, and then they'll say what well, what this what this thing that you're charging for. It's a it, and it mentioned something. I've seen it there. She she is a devil. She is an absolute devil. You know she's an absolute devil. I think I'm gonna have to edit this and cut it up because look how long it is. So yes, he, my my so-called brother knew about this power reserved, and he was wanting to use that to uh to to uh get me out of the picture, and the sister-in-law was also, so the sister-in-law definitely I would say told him you can get them out of the picture using this and she's uh contacted them in Gedeon Sons while I was in Nigeria to use this to um proceed without me while I was still ni in Nigeria she's 100% responsible and she's 100 well I mean I mean, she's she's not uh, innocent at all. She's not innocent, and all these people that have done this to me, apart from my so-called brother, have done this fraud on me. I've been white English. They've been white English. I can't overlook the significance of that. I can't overlook the significance of that because uh, I've suffered a lot from white English people while I've been living in England. I've suffered a lot. So this, this is not the first time. Plus, further abuses, as I've fought for the truth and fought for my rights after this, I've been abused by Cumbria police. They've all been white. I've been, uh, I've had Essex police 
try to um, prosecute me for harassment. It's nothing of the kind. They've been white. I've had City of London police uh, not help me and then uh, act against me and they've been white. I've had white other white solicitors. Almost everybody involved in this has been white and English. When I've complained to Cumbria police, the pe people that have abused me there in the professional standards department have been white or the police that have dealt with uh, my complaint and abused me in the dealing of my complaint have been white English. Uh, when I went to uh, uh, Grange over Sands for the first time in great distress uh, and asked to see uh, the, the, the solicitor running the office there. He called Cumbria police on me after uh, being aggressive towards me, who arrested me. They were all white. They were all white. And uh, they, they, they imprisoned me in their police cell at Kendall Police Station for 24 hours. They were all white. Uh, when uh, I went to the Grange Over Sands office over a year later to ask for uh, my mum's estate information and I, I had my own uh, grant of probate by that time which I've had to get from the um from the uh from the um probate registry myself. The all white staff asked me to to wait in reception as though they were going to help me and they called the police and they were without telling me they had me wait for them when they were really waiting for the police to come and abuse me again. They were all white. Uh, don't let anyone tell you that uh, England is not a racist country. England is not a corrupt country. I've suffered terrible abuse in this country. I've suffered terrible abuse from uh, white English people. You know. And this is uh, over years, over years, over years. If I told all the stories, uh, it would be, um, people may be surprised, people, you know, may be shocked and find it hard to believe. I've suffered a lot. Anyway, this is too long, so this is going to have to be edited. If I can skillfully edit it, that would be great.